Hi, Maria here. Welcome to my channel. Today, I have so many perfumes to share with you. New ones that I've never tried. I was so excited. So I can't wait to share. But before I do, if you haven't subscribed, just go ahead and hit that button. Join the Weird and Wonderful family. It would be amazing to have you part of the community. And if you already are a part of the community, thank you so much. You guys are so amazing and let's get into the ridiculous amount of perfumes I tried this week. Okay, so I'm gonna go through ones that uh, I have talked about in the past but just haven't worn very much uh, in the past year or so. So I've got a, I've got a couple of those uh, and then I've got like all new things. So the first one, I don't even know if you can get this at Zara anymore but it is Zara Yellow Sun and I haven't worn this one in probably two years. And I'm so disgusted with myself because it is absolutely amazing. So it has green apple, peach, and coconut. Those are the only notes. It just smells so uh, refreshing, so exuberant, so juicy. Uh, so it's great for during the day. It's not overly long lasting, but you get about four hours, which isn't bad considering that it's a cheapie. Um, I am just so impressed with this. I wore it to bed actually. Uh, and it just made me happy instantly. So if you can find Zara Yellow Sun, definitely get it. It's uber fun. The next fragrance that I wore, um, again, I am so on the Bath & Body Works Orange and Ginger Aromatherapy Lotion. I bought the shower gel. I just love it. I find it so invigorating and energizing. So I was trying to think, okay, what other fragrances can I pair it with? And for me, an orange ginger combination goes with lots of white florals, um, you know, obviously Twilly Oja, uh, ginger, um, but really you could wear it with like white florals, anything that's a little bit fl fresher, clean, you could wear it with a vanilla. Uh, I chose to wear it with Alien Eau Sublime. Now this one, again, is very difficult to come by, but um, it is the most amazing alien version for summer. So it's got kind of lemon on the opening. There's some solar notes. It's absolutely amazing. And then you've got that alien DNA in the dry down. Um, I believe this is an eau de toilette, so it doesn't last as long as uh, the original alien, but you still get like five, six hours out of this. It's a little bit spicy somehow, or it feels spicy. So the orange and ginger just works perfect with it. Very invigorating, uh, not too sweet. It's just perfect. So for summer and the hot weather, this that would be an amazing combination. Okay, the next fragrance that I wore was Ajwad by Latafa. Now this has gotten a ton of hype on the internet. Uh, first of all, I really... I really love the the bottle, like it's kind of funky, kind of a little bit different. So the bottle's cool. The fragrance, like, okay, first of all, like not to be rude, uh, but Ajwad, I I instantly, <laughs> I actually thought it, it, it was A-S-W-A-D. So it wasn't until I looked at it just before I recorded, I realized it was Ajwad. Uh, I thought it was Aswad and all I could think of was Aswad. And so um, that kind of ruined things for me. I'm sorry, I know that's a bit crude, but the fragrance, um, it's it's jammy, but there's something in it that just doesn't agree with me. So there's some sort of sharpness in there. I find with Latafas, a lot of times I struggle with this sharpness that I find. So same thing with the Beidi El Oud Amethyst by Latafa. There's some sort of metallic quality in it that I find uh, very sharp and slightly off-putting. I could see where people would enjoy this, but I just find it harsh and abrasive. First of all, it's uh, kind of that jammy wood rose combination, which is kind of like all the rage now. It's got fruity notes in it, so there is a certain jamminess in here. The rose definitely is the star player as far as the florals. It's got some cedar in there. There's vanilla, amber, and musk in the base. I, I, I don't like it. I, I just don't like it. So I really, really struggle with that metallic thing in Latafa fragrances. So I don't mind it in Amethyst. Like I, I actually really like Amethyst, but in this one, it seems stronger. So lots of people really love this. It's that rose, jammy, woody combination. 
uh, like like all the other ones. Uh, there's nothing unique about it at this point. For the most part, it's a mass appealing fragrance. It's not too strong or woody, long lasting on the skin, but that sharp quality that I'm starting to realize may be part of Latafa's DNA really isn't for me. So um, everybody, everybody's tolerance for things are, are different. So, you know, some people hate the Mansara DNA. I did at first, and then I kind of kind of am addicted to, to the, the smell. Like I can't stop sniffing those weird oily Manseras, but um, I can see why a lot of people wouldn't like them. So this, there's a metallic quality that I find in it, a sharpness. Same thing in Yara, I found it sharp, slightly abrasive. This one I find sharp, slightly abrasive, but people are loving it. So take, take my thoughts for what they're worth. <laughs> Next fragrance that I am in love with is Frank Bouclet's Vanille. Now this um, is my favorite vanilla, I think, of all times, besides Tom Ford's Tobacco Vanille. Like, I love Tobacco Vanille. But this one, um, there's a bit of a Coca-Cola vibe in it for me. And lately, I've been loving that. So Mandorlo de Sicilia kind of had a root beer vibe. This one reminds me of that in a way, except it feels a little bit more Coca-Cola. So this is the kind of vanilla that I can get behind. I don't find it sickly. I guess what I'd categorize it as is a fresh kind of slightly citrus vanilla. This has lime, grapefruit, and cardamom in the opening. Uh, I don't really get the lime or the grapefruit. I just get a bit of a citrus uh, citrus opening that's just delicious. It is caramel, ginger, and flowers in the heart, and then the base has vanilla, cedar, and musk. So for whatever reason, this gives me a Coca-Cola vibe. My guess is the cardamom and the the citruses are giving it that feel. It's got a bit of a kick to it. It's fresh. I, I would definitely wear this in the summer. Uh, so for me, this would work as a summer vanilla. It would work all year round. Uh, longevity isn't amazing on it. I think it was about five hours max, but I thoroughly enjoyed wearing this. So I highly recommend this one. Next new fragrance um, is Untamed Perfumes. They released a new formulation of Chocolate Earth. So I have the older formulation here, uh, and now I've got the newer formulation, and I love it. So my struggle with chocolate fragrances, I like them. Uh, so I really like Hugo Boss, the scent Private Accord. It's mixed with orange, it's light, it's short-lived, uh, but it's not too chocolatey. So if a fragrance gets too chocolatey, I find it a little sickly, like I don't overly enjoy it. So something like Chocolate Greedy, it goes a little too powdery, a little too thick. Uh, Coco Musk, I don't mind that one for a chocolate fragrance, but again, very short-lived. Um, but then there's some other chocolate fragrances where it just smells like a chocolate dessert, and that's not really my vibe. I don't mind it paired with a citrus or paired with, like I'd love a chocolate raspberry fragrance. I think that would be amazing. But this is a chocolate fragrance that I can get behind. Oh, another one that I really love, really, really love and enjoy is Chocolate Queen. So that chocolate kind of paired with the florals and just whatever other notes she's got going on there. Uh, it smelt somehow light and a little bit more airy. The older version, it had a lot of fennel and tarragon in it. So it was a lot more herbaceous and, and earthy. Uh, and that earthiness was uh, the the star player, and then the chocolate was underneath it. In this version, in the new version, the chocolate is the star player. So the notes are fennel pine and tarragon on top, on the in the heart, cedar moss, ilemi mushrooms, and marigold. In the base, it has salted chocolate, fresh earth, fir balsam, maple sugar, oak moss, patchouli, and woods. As I was saying, the older version, definitely more the earth, the, the fennel, those came out a lot stronger. Whereas in the new formulation, the, the salted chocolate really comes through. Uh, it doesn't smell overly salty, uh, but it is so delicious. The chocolate stays present on the skin forever. Like for the entirety of the perfume, I can smell that chocolate. Kind of deepens as time goes on. Uh, there's a bit of an airiness to it in the opening somehow. 
and then it dries down to that delicious chocolate. The two things that are present the whole entire time is chocolate and earth. Uh, but the chocolate, like I said, is way more prominent. It's sweeter and yet somehow it's a little bit more bright. Uh, so I am in love with it. It's really addictive. Like I want to smell myself all the time when I have it on. Uh, it lasts forever on the skin. So I'm talking at least 10 hours, if not longer. I can't speak to the projection as of yet, but it feels like it's a little bit more close to the skin uh, than some of the other fragrances like my Greek Lover. Uh, this one, although it's a chocolate fragrance, I feel like it's something that you could wear all year round. Um, it's a very different and it's very niche. So I've talked about this before. Sometimes niche can be mass appealing. Sometimes niche can be a little bit more niche -y, So um, a little bit more different, maybe not so mass appealing. This one is so delicious, it, but it's interesting. So the earth component is still there and it's very, very different, but I love it. I, what I'm finding is that more and more, I'm really enjoying wearing fragrance for the experience that it gives me. So where a fragrance is slightly different, maybe not, not everybody's cup of tea, but I just really am intrigued by it. I find wearing it to be an experience. I enjoy wearing it because it makes me think about things like the earth. It makes me think about the elements or whatever. Uh, more and more I'm finding that and I like something slightly different. Although this one has the chocolate, it's balanced nicely with some uh, more savory notes. So it never gets sickly or cloying. Um, yeah, I just think it's absolutely gorgeous. I, I am so blown away by this new formulation. The older formulation wasn't my cup of tea really because it was so earthy and it was just a little too earthy for me. Now the chocolate has come, come up, but it still has that kind of earthy stuff to ground it and make it less less cloying love it so with the chocolate paired with things like mushroom and balsam and moss that kind of stuff it just it's like it balances just like with a really sugary dessert if you don't have any salt in it it doesn't feel quite balanced it just feels a little sickly i find that with fragrance too if you have some balance in there with something that's a little more savory uh, a little bit more grounding it just makes the overall fragrance so much more round and full i am absolutely <laughs> I, I, I love it. Like, I love this one. So, Chocolate Earth by Untamed. Moving on. So, I tried two Boho Boco fragrances. The first one was Sea Salt and Caramel. The next one was Red Wine and Brown Sugar. Now, out of these two, definitely liked the Sea Salt and Caramel better. The Red Wine and Brown Sugar just wasn't my taste. Uh, the wine felt a little bit sour on my skin. Uh, it didn't last near as long on my skin. And overall, like, I, yeah, it didn't speak to me in any way, shape, or form. So the red wine, it has red wine. It's got berries, dried fruit, raspberry, like all the things that I would think that I would be absolutely in love with. It's got cedar, patchouli, rum, brown sugar, leather, and caramel. But it just came across as, you know, when wine has a bit of a sour edge, like a little bit of a tart edge, uh, I feel like that's what comes through for me more than anything. And it kind of stays linear. It's a little bit soapy somehow to me. So I definitely wasn't a fan of this one. Uh, the sea salt and caramel, I definitely liked it more. It definitely had kind of um, a bit of a solar aquatic feel to it. So it has sea salt, lemon, pink pepper, jasmine, bay leaf, seagrass, salt, caramel, brown sugar, and cedar. So it definitely felt like, um, you know, I felt like I was on the ocean when I wore this. So at the ocean eating a salted caramel ice cream would be, I think, what I would suggest not quite that creamy, but you, you get that idea. So there's a little bit of a spiciness to it. Uh, definitely get the salt, get the caramel. I did enjoy wearing this one. Uh, this one was definitely longer lasting than the red wine and brown sugar. So this one lasted for, I don't know, at least six, seven, maybe eight hours. Uh, liked the scent bubble, smelt this one tons, whereas the red wine one stayed a little closer to the skin. Um, I, I enjoyed this one. I'm not pot, like, it's not like I, I was like madly in love with it, but if you like a gourmand, 
uh, for summer, this one would actually be really beautiful. So the sea salt is there, the caramel is there. If you like things like Olympia Aqua or some salt, the salt is very present though. So you have to be a salt fan in your fragrances, but it, it was really fun to wear. Glad I tried it. Not sure I would want it. If I got this as a gift, like a Mother's Day present or something, it's not like I'd be mad at it at all. And I definitely would wear it. Next, uh, I went on a mission to try the rest of my Soradora fragrances. I tried Camel Oud, Vanatu, Cresque, Gladiator, uh, Orchidé Rouge, which I've talked about before, really nice, and Mandorle, which I can't find. I don't know what I did with it. So basically, Broceliande, Orchidé Vini, and Mandorle all kind of fit in the same category, being a little bit more gourmand. So uh, Broceliande, it's got the Lime Rum 5, which I'm absolutely in love with. Orchidée Vini has a little bit more of an almond caramel uh, vanilla vibe. There's a little bit of juiciness in this one. The only thing it has noted as um, a fruit is the bergamot. So I don't know what's... Oh, there's also orange in here. There's a little bit of a langy lang. So personally, I think that this one could work as a summer vanilla. Um, I'm I'm not in love with it. Like I, I really, really enjoy it, but there's other ones that I definitely love more. Uh, this one also didn't last as long as I had hoped. So it goes closer to the skin quite quickly. It's definitely one I really enjoy, but I prefer Mandorle. Where this one is a little bit more vibrant, a little bit more juicy, a little bit more playful, Mandorle is a little bit more sexy, a little bit kind of almost smoky, uh, sultry uh, type vanilla. So it has suede tonka bean rum, vanilla heliotrope, cashmere wood, cacao, caramel, woody notes, and white musk. So, so the boozy factor uh, definitely comes out a little bit more. The leather comes out in Mandorle. It's a little bit warmer. It's a little bit more sexy, sultry. So I prefer Mandorle over Orchidée Rouge, but they're both really gorgeous fragrance, honestly. Out of the three, obviously um, the first one I chose was Broceliande. That's my top pick. The second would be Mandorle and then Orchidée Rouge. But now I wanna talk about the ones that are a lot more different. So first I'll talk about Camel Oud because it's kind of, it's kind of like in between the two. So uh, the, the three I just talked about, they're more vanilla, like the base is definitely a vanilla and then you go from there. This one is a little bit more woody. Camel Oud to me is a little bit more masculine. Uh, than the other three. Uh, Orchidée Rouge, would I, I would say, would be more feminine-leaning. Mandorle and Broceliande, perfectly unisex. Uh, Camel Oud, I would say, is a little bit more masculine, but it's still unisex. So unisex-leaning masculine is what I would say with this one. Camel Oud is definitely a little bit more balsamic, a little bit more peppery, a little bit more woody. Uh, you lose like any of that caramel, which uh, honestly Soradora does their caramel and their rums, like that kind of accord really, really well. Uh, this one, you lose the boozy factor and you're getting mainly a balsamic, peppery, woody fragrance. It's still nice. It's not my taste, but I would find this one to be kind of sexy on a guy. Uh, but I wouldn't want to wear this one. The next three are Vanuatu, Gladiator, and Grisk. Actually, it's a Vanuatu, I think. I think that's how you say it, Vanuatu. So this one has papyrus, black pepper, violet. There's fig nectar, there's rhubarb. Like there's all sorts of bizarre notes in this one. This one has uh, very much an authentic sandalwood feel. When I went to Calgary and hung out with uh, Matthew Meleg and Sunyata, he put uh, some, some sandalwood all over my skin. And so what I perceived as sandalwood in other fragrances is a lot more sweet, a lot more smooth, whereas the sandalwood that he gave me to smell, which is the like straight up sandalwood, I'm getting more of that in here. And it's a little bit sour to me. Uh, so there's a sour, uh, almost, I don't know, it's a quality that's weird and kind of makes me go, like, like sometimes when I, Sometimes when I smell something that's a little bit off-putting to me, my lip kind of starts curling like this, like I can't even help it. And it does a little bit of this action. So 
this fragrance kind of gives me that. Like I can feel it even when I smell it. There's a greenness to it. I can see a lot of people really liking this if they enjoy sandalwood. Lots of unique notes. Uh, this one I would say is unisex leaning masculine again. So for me, this is a no. Next, I want to talk about Gladiator. Gladiator smells delicious, but it reminds me of Creed Aventus, honestly. So it's got that Creed Aventus vibe, but this thing lasts forever. Like I'm talking like 10, 12 hours on the skin and it projects really beautifully. It's got grapefruit, mint, apple, pineapple, bergamot, lemon, white flowers, coumarin, patchouli, cedar, bitter orange, geranium, vetiver, woody notes. So, you know, you've got that pineapple. It's not the sweet pineapple. It's more the green pineapple feel. Uh, very fresh, very invigorating. I smell the mint. I smell the pineapple. I smell the apple. Uh, but I, I find that Creed Aventus or the Gladiator DNA to be much more masculine. So I, I know females wear, uh, you know, the, that, that DNA. I just find it a little bit strong, but I really like it. Now, my husband smelled this. He just went, oh, it smells too soapy. So he associates it with very clean. And it is like, it's kind of that clean, fresh fragrance. I love the pineapple note in this. It's just amazing. Beast Performer. Uh, I can see a lot of people really, really loving this one, but it's just too masculine for me. Beautiful, like gorgeous fragrance. Too masculine for me, but if you like that Creed Aventus feel, this one is definitely great. And like I said, it's just a powerhouse for longevity. I'm not saying that this is even remotely a dupe or it, an exact fragrance that you couldn't have both. It's been a long time, honestly, since I've smelt Creed Aventus. But as soon as I smelt it, I thought of that uh, because it kind of has that same, it's in the same genre. So uh, really, really enjoy it. Think it's gorgeous. I wish I could get my husband to wear this because I think it's uber sexy, uh, but not for me. Now, the last one was Grisk, and I saved this one for last because it is the most unique out of the bunch, in my opinion, and I am in love with it. It's the weirdest fragrance I've ever smelt, I think. Well, I've smelt some weird fragrances lately, but this one is so freaking weird. I can't even believe it. So it's got basil. Is it basil or basil? I can never remember. I basically panic when I have to say that word because I'm like, is it basil or is it basil? And I can never remember. It doesn't matter how many times I'm told. Anyway, it's got basil, it's got mint in, and it smells so minty and basil-y. So when I smell it in here, it smells more basil or basil. When I smell it on my skin, it smells uber minty. Like so minty, I, I was like, did I just roll around in uh, an herb garden? Like it was full on minty basil goodness. Uh, um, not my normal, <laughs> not my normal MO at all. Like I, I, what is happening to me? My nose is changing. I'm not liking candy, sweet, fruity florals these days. Although I still love those. I'm liking these weird green fragrances. Like I, 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 it's like I'm craving green these days. So the mint basil combination, I am in love with it. It literally makes my nose tingle, like tingle with coolingness. Like I, 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 I have no words. Like I've used up almost the whole entire thing. I couldn't stop spraying it on myself. Now, the reason why this is so amazing. Okay. I'm going to read the notes first. Sorry. I'm getting so excited. Basil, spicy mint, caramel, currant buds, Sicilian bergamot, black currant, clary sage, Haitian vetiver, clove, galbanum, violet, woody notes, pepper, and Virginia cedar. So it starts out smelling literally legit like an herb garden, like mint, basil, you know, that clary sage, all of those, like, like you're picking herbs in a garden. Now, first of all, I love herbs. So, um... So, so quick little story, when my, when my, my son was little, like I, I've always had herbs and I love lavender, like I've talked about, but I planted lavender, mint, rosemary, thyme, all these different, um, different herbs. And then I would have like my son, I'd say, run your hand through this. 
and then he would smell his hand and it was just so cool. Like I would do it whenever I walk by herbs, I run my hand through it and smell because it smells so delicious, so clean, so fresh, so energizing, so nourishing somehow to the soul. So I absolutely love herbs, love smelling herbs. So it just feels very nourishing to me somehow in my being when I smell things like mint and sage and, and, and basil and so on. And it also smells, I really love essential oils. So I have a huge essential oil collection. Let me know if you guys would ever be interested in seeing my essential oil collection because I've got quite a few, like I think I've got 15 or 20 large kind of bottles of essential oil. And I actually mix my own essential oils to put in diffusers. Uh, so if you guys would ever want a video on that, please let me know because I've got like tons and I can tell you how I mix them and all of that. But anyway, uh, love essential oils, I absolutely love them. And so this felt very hippie-esque in a way uh, in the opening, but then it kind of morphs and you smell vanilla caramel on your skin. So the, the greenness kind of dissipates, which is good because I can only handle that for so long. It lasts for about an hour and then it, and then it starts to become this caramel. Caramel starts coming up and uh, it becomes caramel prominent. So it sweetens up crazily on the skin. So it's like a savory and then sweet experience. So it's like you eat food and then you have dessert. It is the coolest thing ever. Is it for everyone? No. Is it for me? Absolutely. Like I, I am so like, I just love this thing. So weirdest fragrance ever. It's like you're on a, an adventure of, of uh, deliciousness from the herbs and spices, herbs and balsam to all of a sudden having a delicious decadent dessert. Um, decent longevity on this, but not amazing. So about seven, eight hours. Uh, but it sits closer to the skin after about the first hour. So the, the greenness projects, uh, but then it starts to kind of mellow out. That said, for a summer fragrance, which is when I would wear this, uh, love the cooling scent sensation. Uh, love the fact that that cooling aspect is what projects. So for me in the summer in the heat, I would love that. Uh, but then as that sweetness comes in, it smells just like sweet caramelly a little bit creamy feeling that stays closer to the skin. So I get a beautiful, like a small scent bubble around me so I can smell little whiffs of it, not much, uh, but it's not too cloying. So it works in the summer. So this is honestly the most unique thing I think I've ever smelt. Uh, very weird, not mass appealing at all, but I am absolutely obsessed with this thing. <laughs> And that is it. That is my amazing week of adventures, trying on all sorts of new perfumes. The stands out, standouts for me would definitely be Grisque, uh, the Vani from uh, Frank Bouclette. Love that Coca-Cola vibe. And then the Chocolate Earth, like I'm totally in love with that one as well. All the other ones were fun to try, not necessarily my vibe. I definitely have three here that I, I'm absolutely in love with. So what about you? Did you try anything new? Uh, did something really stand out to you and you absolutely loved it? If, you did, if you've got something like that, leave it in the comments. Would love to hear about it. And other than that, I hope you have an amazing week and we'll talk to you soon.